All right, guys, welcome back to the Sunday morning sessions of the talks. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Amanda Metzkis. You notice I'm not really holding my, looking at my notes because I work in the same office as Amanda. I've known her for two, three years. I don't even know at this point. It's all kind of a blur. Um, working with Amanda does that. She is the executive director of Camp Quest, the summer camp for children of secular parents. Uh, has been the executive director since, oh man, 2008. If it's not in the bio, I did need this. Um, has been involved since 2003, was on the board from 2004 to 2007. Um, it's a fantastic camp. I love hearing about it. People are finally talking into getting involved, even though it's outdoors, which is not my favorite thing in the world. But it sounds so fantastic that I really want to volunteer and counsel and be a counselor next year. Um, she's also vice president of the Humanist Community of Central Ohio here in Columbus. Uh, and co-authored Raising Freethinkers, a practical guide for parenting beyond belief with Dale McGowan, Malin Matsumara, and Jan DeVore. Uh, she holds an MA in political science from the Ohio State University, right here, and a BA in, BA in international relations and psychology from Brown. She's going to talk about Camp Quest. Thank you, Jesse. All right, all right, welcome everybody. Um, I know that it's early Sunday morning and that many of you probably have not been being responsible people who get enough sleep, because this is a conference. So I'm first gonna have Allison come up here and help me, um, and I'm gonna need everybody to stand up. I need everybody to stand up. You gotta stand up. So at Camp Quest, one of the things that we do is we have a morning circle where before breakfast, all the cabins get together, um, and to make sure that everyone's there and everyone's ready for the day, we do a song or a game or something. And so this morning, Allison and I are going to teach you all the corn song. Um, and it has motions. Um, so it's not really a repeat after me song, but I think you'll pick it up pretty quickly. Um, are we ready, Allison? Okay. We're just going to do corn, potato, and bananas. Okay. Ready. Okay. All right. Okay. First, you form the corn. Form, form the corn. And then you shuck the corn shuck shuck the corn and then you pop the corn pop pop the corn all right now you form the potato form form the potato and then you peel the potato peel peel the potato and then you mash the potato mash mash the potato awesome okay last verse ready you form the banana Form, form the banana, and then you peel the banana. Peel, peel the banana, and then you go! Bananas! Go, go, bananas! All right, awesome. Good job, everybody. Thank you, Allison. Allison is a Camp Quest expert. She's been coming to Camp Quest since she was nine. Nine, all right. So, now that we're all awake, we can uh, talk a little bit about what Camp Quest is and what we do. Okay. So Camp Quest is a summer camp aimed at kids ages 8 to 17. We're aimed at kids from non-religious families. Um, and we're about three things. We're about fun, friends, and free thought. Um, and the fun part is really important, right? Because how many of you have been to summer camp? Raise your hands. Yeah. Now, would you go to summer camp if when you went to summer camp, you sat in a room and got lectured to all day? No. No. So we do canoeing, swimming, hiking, all of those things that you think of when you think of summer camp. Um, and so that's, that's a really key part of what we do. Another part of what we do at camp is give the kids a chance to make friends and form a community with other kids from non-religious families. Because for a lot of campers at our camp, you know, their experiences at school might be that they're not really out about their family's beliefs. Um, they don't really feel like they can be forthcoming about their doubts. So camp is an important place for them to have that experience. Um, <coughs> pardon me. Coffee. Ah. And then the third part of what we do is free thought. And that's the educational programs that we do at camp. So we do critical thinking challenges. We do science activities. We do philosophy. Um, one of the really awesome activities that I lead at camp is called Socrates Cafe. Um, and it's a, just a philosophy discussion activity where what we do is we start with a question. So we might start with the question, what is knowledge? Um, and the key thing about Socrates Cafe is it's not a format like this, where an adult is up front, you know, telling all of the campers what to think and telling them, you know, oh, here's my wisdom that I'm imparting to you. 
What it is is we're all sitting in a circle and we're all becoming better questioners together. So one of the key rules of Socrates Cafe is that it's not the case that the adults in the circle participating have the answers and we're trying to get the kids to learn those answers. It's that we're all becoming better questioners together. So what I do as facilitator for that program, basically, I keep a list of who wants to talk. Um, so that's one of our educational programs. Our camp is open to campers. This is pretty important from all backgrounds, actually. And we've had campers from religious families come to camp. Um, and they have a great experience. Um, we also have um, a, a pretty strict rule that we don't label the campers with a worldview. So all of our counselors at Camp Quest, maybe not all, but the vast majority of our counselors at Camp Quest identify as atheists, agnostics, humanists. Um, but our campers, while they're free to embrace those labels and apply them to themselves if they want to, we are very careful that we do not say that this is a camp for atheist kids. We say this is a camp for kids from non-religious families. Because we all, I think in this room, most likely, had the opportunity to come to these conclusions about our worldview on our own through talking to people, thinking, reading, all these things. We want these kids to have that same opportunity. We don't want to just say, oh, well, your parents are non-religious, therefore you're non-religious. Um, so not labeling the children is a really important part of our kind of philosophy at camp. <coughs> so, um, you know, what, what we want campers to get out of camp is knowing that they're not alone, knowing that there's nothing wrong with not believing, that it's okay to be an atheist, and that they have this network of friends and people that, you know, when something is going on at school, they have that sort of strength to draw from, from that week that they, that they have at camp. Um, the other thing about Camp Quest is that we are kind of playing a pretty big role in the growth of the secular community because there are a lot of parents who once they have kids, they go back to church. You know, the statistics tell us that about 20% of 18 to 25 year olds in America are non-religious, but at the same time they tell us that two of the biggest factors that bring people back to church is getting married and having kids. And why is that? Why does that bring people back to church? It's not that all of a sudden you have kids and magically you believe in God. It's that you have kids and you say, oh, where, where am I going to go to teach my kids ethics and values? Where am I going to go to build a community for my family and have something to participate in? And we've had parents who were actually teaching Sunday school at liberal Christian churches as atheists, as closeted atheists, once they had kids because they didn't know where else to go um, to, to kind of build that community. So when they found out about Camp Quest, they were like, oh, oh, I can raise my kids in a community of free thinkers. So that's part of why what we do is really important. Um, we are also advancing the slides, maybe. Cool. We are growing like crazy. Um, so this summer, we have a little over 622 campers registered for week-long sessions of camp. Um, as you can tell, that's a lot more than last summer. Um, and in the last five years, um, it's just our growth has just exploded. We've been opening new locations. We started in 1996 with one camp in Kentucky. It actually met at the Bulletsburg Baptist Church Camp in Kentucky, believe it or not. Um, and then we were there for a couple of years, and then the Baptists were kind of like, oh, wait, we don't really want to rent to a bunch of atheists. Um, they actually passed a law in Kentucky that the Public Accommodations Act, which says, hey, you're, even though you're a private organization, if you rent to the public, you can't discriminate on certain categories, and religion's one of those categories. In Kentucky, they changed the law so that now, um, if you're a religious organization, you don't have to rent to groups that don't share your religious beliefs. Um, so we call that the Camp Quest Law in Kentucky. And we moved our camp in 1998 to Ohio. The, the folks who started it were in the kind of greater Cincinnati area, so moving across the border into Ohio was sort of the, the next thing to do. Um, but now we have, um, let's see, we have new camps launching this summer in Oklahoma, New England, Washington State, and Southern California. For summer 2013, we have um, programs on deck to open in Arizona and in Kansas City. Um, so we have about 14 different affiliated camp programs across North America, um, and it's, you know, it's just really exciting to see it spread 
all over the place. But I know the, the question that you guys are all wondering is, okay, that's all cool, that's nice. Why is this relevant to me? Why, why should I care, right? So you're thinking, it's going to be a long time before I have an eight-year-old, right? I, I don't have kids to send to camp. Or you're thinking, well, I'm too old to go to camp myself as a camper, so what, what is the point? Why am I here listening to this talk when I could be sleeping? Um, you can come to camp. Um, all of our counselors are volunteers. They're ages 8 to 18 and up, 18 to 80. Um, we've had volunteers as old as 80. Um, we also, I don't know if there are any high school Secular Student Alliance affiliate leaders in the room here, but we have counselors in training who are ages 16 and 17. Um, and they have an awesome time at camp as well. They're kind of a camper-counselor hybrid. Um, so they help lead some activities. They help with um, cabin counseling in some of the younger uh, camper cabins. Um, but they also get some time to just kick back and have fun at camp, like the campers. So you can come to camp, and now you're thinking, okay, Jesse said camp is outside. It's hot out. Uh, you're thinking, I don't know about working with kids. I think the counselors have as much fun at camp as the campers. Um, so I want to give you some reasons why you may want to come volunteer at camp as a counselor. Um, and I have... I've been tabling here all weekend, so at the table I've got a sign-up sheet, I've got brochures, I've got adorable stickers, um, business cards. Um, come take those things. If you want to take those things back um, for your uh, fellow group members who didn't make it to the conference, if you want to grab a handful of stickers and a handful of brochures to give out to your group members, um, please do. Um, I also have some up on the stage up front here, so when we're done, um, you can come grab them up here if you're like, oh, the table is so far away. Um, but back to reasons you might want to get involved with camp. Um, so number five, we're doing this countdown style. Number five is pretty obvious. Um, the kids at Camp Quest are amazing. Um, Allison here is an example. She's amazing. Um, but really, like, you, you'll be impressed um, with how just smart and fun and awesome these kids are. And you get the opportunity to, to come and spend some time with them. And, like, and the kids look up to us. They look up to the counselors. So that's a really cool experience that counselors have at camp. Um, reason four is you get to do fun summer camp stuff. You know, So this is Alvita and Livia with one of our campers canoeing down the Little Miami River in Ohio. Um, and you know, just because you're at camp as a counselor doesn't mean you have to just sit there and be like, no, don't do that. No, no. You, know, you get to go canoeing. You get to go hiking. You get to go swimming. You get to make cool arts and crafts projects. You get to lead. Um, sessions like Socrates Cafe, you get to teach an educational program on something that you care about. You know, maybe you're a physics student and you're like, hey, let's do an egg drop. We did an egg drop at camp this year. It was really fun. We got to climb up on the roof of the dining hall and drop these contraptions from the roof. Um, and that was, that was pretty exciting. So you get to come and do these fun summer camp activities as a counselor and have fun. So that's pretty cool. I kind of was leading into this one as well. You can teach and learn about topics you love. This is Stan Mills. Stan Mills is a biology teacher in Nebraska. He drives all the way out to Ohio to be a counselor at Camp Quest Ohio because he likes camp. Um, and he also goes to Camp Quest Smoky Mountains in Tennessee. And he's doing an activity here on magic and illusion. So he's um, about to fool these young gentlemen with a magic trick. Um, JT was actually at Camp Quest this year in Ohio, and he did an awesome se session on magic with the younger campers that was a lot of fun. So yeah, you get to share things that you're passionate about, that you care about. Um, you know, kind of like the experience you have at this conference where a lot of you get to come to this conference and share things that you're great about um, and that your group is strong at. This is sort of another way of doing something like that. Um, you also get to act silly. And like, this sounds sort of dumb, right? But like in so much of our lives, like we're expected to be very serious and like, oh, okay, I'm a student, I'm taking notes, I'm you know, writing this paper or whatever. And you're always worried about, oh, people are going to think this and that about me. Camp is a place where you can sing the corn song. And people are like, that's awesome, right? And so like, that's a really cool, fun experience you get to have at camp. This is Sarah Silverman. No, not that Sarah Silverman. And Hensley, um, two of our Camp Quest counselors who are having some fun distributing marshmallows for s'mores. And you know, the last reason to, to come to camp as a volunteer is the opportunity to bond with your fellow free thinkers, your fellow counselors. It's a little bit hard to tell in this picture, but that's actually August. Um, so August, for many years, has been the camp director at Camp Quest Ohio. 
Um, and one of the traditions that our camp directors um, love, love, is that we douse them with water. Um, so, yeah, this is August getting doused with water. This year, August actually took a break, took a year off from coming to camp. And for the first time ever, we had a former camper become camp director. Um, Chelsea Pavey started at Camp Quest in 1997 as a camper, and this year she was camp director. So that was pretty exciting. We also did douse her with water. So don't, you know, don't be afraid. The, the tradition did indeed live on. Um, so those are some of the reasons that you might want to come volunteer at camp. It's a really fun thing to do with your group members. Um, and it's, you know, in summer you have a little bit more flexibility with your time. It's also something that I didn't put this on here, but, you know, can look good on a, on a resume, can get you a recommendation letter. I have written, um, I've written recommendation letters for college admission for some of our counselors in training. Um, I've written job recommendation letters for several of our counselors. Livia, who was in that canoeing photo, works at the San Francisco Zoo. Um, and I would like to think my recommendation letter helped with that. Um, but yeah, so, you know, it can be a good way to get some leadership experience, to get some um, volunteering experience, some of those things that, you know, you like to put on a resume or, or get a reference or a recommendation letter um, for your leadership. Um, and that is really what I've got. Those are the reasons that I think you want to volunteer at camp. Um, and we've got a few more minutes. Um, so I was going to take questions. Yes, Sarah. There there are indeed s'mores at Camp Quest. Um, that, is, that is another excellent reason to come to Camp Quest. Sarah is going to Camp Quest Michigan this year. Dave goes to Camp Quest Michigan a lot, um, although he's not going this year. Boo, boo, yes, boo. Um, Amy goes to Camp Quest Michigan as well. Um, do we have other Camp Questers here? Well, and Mary, Mary, where are you, Mary? Mary was here taking photos. Oh, she's probably taking photos in one of the other rooms now. And Julia, Julia is going to be a new Camp Quest counselor this summer at Chesapeake. So, other questions? AJ. <laughs> um, there are probably Camp Quests that are less warm than others. For example, um, Camp Quest Texas. Yes, Texas, though, has air conditioning at their facility. So, you know, we do try to build the schedule to accommodate the weather. So, you know, at Camp Quest Ohio, usually what we're doing after lunch every day is we'll have swimming for a good chunk of the afternoon. We'll do something indoors during like the hottest part of the day so that we're not, you know, all getting heat exhaustion because that's no fun. But Camp Quest Northwest in um, Washington State is like right on the coast in beautiful Northwest Washington. And, you know, probably temperature is pretty moderate. I would bet, you know, it's in the 70s. So if you don't like the heat, that's an option for you. Um, other questions? Yes. That is a great question. Thank you. Um, we have an online application form. We also do a criminal background check. Um, so we'll get your social security number and we'll put it through a background check service um, because it's really important to us that the campers are safe. Um, and then we usually ask for references. Um, and so we'll call your references. But, you know, your, your professors, your leaders of your student group, your, you know, people like that. Um, those are great people. Other jobs you've had, you know, just great people to kind of put down as names for those references. Um, we don't, most of our camps don't actually do an interview. Usually we'll call and say, hey, you know, assuming your background check comes back okay, you're accepted to be on staff, do you have questions? And then we do um, usually a training phone call um, with all of the counselors, and then the counselors come to camp. Um, at most of our sessions come to camp the night before the kids get there, and we do a little more setup and a little more training at that, point, at that time. Other questions? Dave. Yeah. Yes, you can have seconds on s'mores. With that camper's permission, yes. I think Allison would not give you permission. It looks like permission is denied on, on that. Um, Julia. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That, that's actually a really good, um, good point. We have a lot of campers who are vegan or vegetarian. Um, we have the gelatin-free marshmallows. Um, so, you know, you can still enjoy s'mores even if you are a vegan or vegetarian. Yes?
right? Um, and you can get involved at a camp near where your campus is or near where you go home for the summer. I'm glad you mentioned that, Sarah. We are doing actually a mini Camp Quest day camp um, in conjunction with the Atheist Alliance America convention in Denver over Labor Day weekend. So if you are interested in um, getting involved and helping out with that or you're just going to be at the convention and you want to stop by and say hi, um, that is a good way to get to know us a little bit better. Um, for the most part, our volunteering opportunities for this summer are already um, full. Um, so I want to give you just a quick sense of the timeline. Typically our volunteer applications go up online in January and we're taking in volunteer applications like January through April. Um, so watch for that. You know, you can friend us on Facebook, you can follow us on Twitter, um, check out our website. Those are ways to, you know, we'll post like, hey, volunteer applications are up. And then you can, you know, pick a camp that's close to you or that you want to travel to. We do pick up counselors at the airport. So if you want to fly in somewhere and come to camp, um, we can do that. Um, and your room and board during the week of camp is covered. So, you know, you just got to pay your travel expenses to get there. And then, you know, you spend the week spending absolutely no money. So that's kind of a good thing. Um, but yeah, we will, um, we'll pick you up at the airport. We'll have those volunteer applications up in January. And then, um, you know, we're putting together the team of volunteer counselors for each session kind of throughout the spring. So that is everything I have. I see Jesse standing up because um, it looks like it's about time for the next session. So thank you all so much. Thank you for getting up early and early, um, early for this conference anyway, and coming to my talk. And um, I will be out at the table the rest of the day. So if you have more questions, feel free to come find me there. Thank you all so much.